and I've been getting heaps of emails that uh, people really want me to cover more of this sovereign issue, and uh, so I'm listening, and I am. And today I have um, Derek Hill that will join the call very shortly, and he is uh, basically practicing his sovereignty here in Ontario, and we're going to discuss everything from buying property for next to nothing and own, owning it free and clear property and all, no taxes, to cashing in speeding tickets as they are legal, legal tender to the awful plight that he had to endure while he was in jail. Um, Derek, are you there yet? Yeah, I'm here. I'm kicking. Hey there. How you doing today? Thanks for coming on the show. Uh, no problem. Glad to be here. Excellent. Now, um, I just want to let everybody know, too, as far as I know, after this show on um, today on Monday, Wednesday, I have uh, a woman by the name of Linda coming in to talk uh, feminine womb healing and stuff like that. And then Friday... We're going to have Dean Clifford coming on the show, as far as I know, with Derek, and they're going to do a little bit of a tete-a-tete uh, between each other, all things sovereign. So um, look into tuning into that show as well, all of my shows. Don't just listen to one. Listen to them all, because I told you to. Yeah, anyway, okay. So, um, anyhow... Uh, I just wanted to say again, hi Derek. Thanks for coming on the show, and let's get uh, let's get started on your take on what you're going through sovereign wise. Where would you like to start? Would you like to start with how you got into all this to begin with, which is student loans, and a lot of people are going to want to hear this. Uh, yeah. Well, what I was going to do is I was just going to be uh, telling people about um, how I got into all this stuff. You know, all the trials and errors that I did and all the things that I've done. And after that, then I'll be talking about uh, a lot of success stories according to chronological order. That so, sounds fantastic. Nothing better than a well-prepared guest. So <laughs> go ahead. I, I just go along with the flow, so <laughs> I'm rarely prepared for anything. I just take it and leave it. But, um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, I first got into this movement. Um, by uh, looking at my first uh, statement from student loans, and it was 49 grand, and I thought to myself, I was, I'm not going to be able to pay this off, right? Because my uh, aunt kept telling me, you know, you never, you don't, you shouldn't uh, take out a student loan um, because you're going to spend the next 25 years paying it off. And once she was right, it was accruing almost 1,200 bucks a month just for the interest alone, and that, and I just said that is just. That's unreasonable. I cannot deal with that. And it was just getting higher and higher and higher. So I had to, so I started looking for some possible remedies, maybe some legal loopholes and so on and so forth. And um, someone sent me a link to Rob Bernard. And I checked out Rob Bernard and, you know, all the things that he was saying uh, kind of resonated with me because I was a Red Bull back then and I didn't really care a whole lot. Uh, about the police and uh, so on and so forth. So I started listening to what he had to say, and then when he went, uh, talked to the student owner, I was like, "Shit, I hit gold." All right. So I started really, you know, paying attention to what he was doing, and I asked for some of his help, and he sent me a couple of documents, which was just a simple notice to the uh, National Student Loan Center for our version for Ontario. BC is a little bit different. Um. But I sent in a notice, uh, you know, just kind of throwing in a little bit of Rob Menard logic, and uh, it didn't go anywhere. It did not go anywhere at all. And I was just to interrupt you, just to interrupt you uh, briefly, this is a problem that I'm seeing coming from a lot of Menard's work, and I think everybody starts there. I think, like, the, the first thing that we're watching is, uh, what, 96 is the fix, is one of the first things that we watch, and then we move on from there. And this is something that people need to know. There's a lot of Menard stuff that just doesn't work because the homework isn't really put into it. And it's not that I'm trying to bash him, but uh, good intentions just don't make enough. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, and I agree. You know, I think... I'm grateful that Rob Bernard was the person that got me into all this stuff. Unfortunately, he only did step one. He's missing step three, uh, two, three, four, and five, you know. He just, 
he puts in a couple basic things and he hooks you with that, like the definition of a person or a driver's uh, or driving. You know, those definitions alone um, is enough to hook you in there. So yeah, definitely, that's exactly what it is. But uh, again. Um, at the same time that we don't want people to be spoon-fed the information, they have to look for, imse uh, for themselves. The people that are giving the information have to be responsible with what they're giving. So, continue. Yes. So, moving on, um, when I, uh, when I kind of gave up on the notice, I tried to look for another, uh, another way out, right? Another, uh, another possible route that I can take to take care of this, you know, because I was talking to some uh, people who actually work at OSAP, uh, the OSAP office, and they said, you know, you can apply for uh, interest relief, you can apply for extended uh, non-repayment status and all that stuff. And I was like, yeah, but that's not doing anything. That's still just putting it uh, behind the books. So I had to, I had to really start looking for a possible remedy to really take care of this to make it go away permanently. So I sent an email to Rob Menard and Rob was asking some money and that's when I kind of drew the line and I said, well, I can't do this anymore, you know, I spent way too much money. And when I did the student loan, I was sending in my, you know, claim of right, notice of understanding and intent, all that stuff, but it never went anywhere. So after I, after I started um, looking elsewhere, I started really looking into their own legislation. Uh, which is the Student Loans Act, and uh, it's been a while actually, um, but I believe um, you can you can read the Student Loans Act. It's very short and it's pretty revealing. Um, one of the sections talks about how um, if default happens, then they can use funds from the Consolidated Revenue Fund in order to. Um, in order to um, to take care of it to achieve payment, so I thought that was uh, I thought that was pretty eye opening. So I started looking to the some of the asked more in depth, and so I tried to apply some remedy. Unfortunately, I still didn't get anywhere, and that's when I met uh, a good friend of mine, and he started uh, telling me about securities on how you're supposed to send in a security for payment. So that's when I started looking into uh, how I can. Uh, uh, use securities and um, and send it for tendered as payment. So that's when someone uh, linked me a link to uh, Doug Riddle's A for V. Okay, the A for V uh, didn't work for me. The it only worked once, and I was with the IRS, and they sent a link or they sent a letter back at me saying we we can only do this once, um, but we suggest you just take it up with CRA. So right there, I didn't know at the time, but right there it gave me, I uh, gave solid proof that CRA and IRS is just different jurisdictions. They have the same goals and they still run by the IMF, which is right. evident by their own uh, IRS code. <clears throat> so after I, uh, after I started looking into the A for V, I started looking at the basic principles on why A for V should work. So I started, I went back to square one. I went, just tried to uh, apply the basic, just to put it as simple as possible so I would understand everything that's put, being put in there, okay? So I sent that okay. in, still didn't go anywhere, right? And then when I sent that in, I was, uh, while I was waiting for it, I was dealing with police other, uh, police stuff, and I was, uh, you know, practicing other things, and I was, I had a lot of balls, I had a lot of courage, and, um... Which seems to be what's necessary in, in this situation, it's, and, and that's what I admire, is that you just say, I don't care, I'm gonna do what I have to do, and it doesn't matter what happens in the, in, in the end, I'm just going for it. Yeah, it's a duty, almost. The duty to do something right. Um, so that's when I started uh, um, looking into uh, some uh, a couple of nifty tricks on dealing with the police. So me and my friend, um, I purposely told him to go over the speed limit because uh, I would told him if anything uh, if anything happens, I'll pay I'll pay for the speeding ticket. So he got a speeding ticket, and it was it was a seventy five dollar charge. 
Okay. And uh, so when he got it, he just uh, he just gave it to me right away. And then I, I signed it and endorsed it properly. So I went, so we went to the bank the very next day and uh, I went up to the uh, court clerk and I said, I want to cash in the speeding ticket. And, uh, you know, she did the Justin Bieber thing, you know, fling her hair and shit like that. And um, she said, you can't cash in the speed ticket. You can't do that. And I said, well, you know, according to the Bills of Exchange Act, state that this is clearly a bill of exchange on the top left corner. And according to your own, uh, uh, according to the Financial Administration Act, it states that a bill of exchange is, in fact, money or a negotiable instrument. And according to the Bank Act, it states that a negotiable instrument properly endorsed is in fact a security and you take securities so I want to get paid for this speeding ticket so uh, we pretty much uh, went back and forth for like a few more minutes and then she said I'm gonna have to call the cops so she called the cops it's amazing because you know every time an average Joe calls the cops it takes about half hour to an hour but when a bank calls it they're there in less than 10 seconds so when the when the police shows up right the police says what's going on and i told them you know i'm just trying to cash in the speeding ticket and they do an, and they do the justin bieber thing <laughs> and uh <laughs> like i hope people know what i mean by the justin bieber thing they're you know? flicking their hair because they don't know what you're talking about <laughs> yeah you know, like, I don't even know the Justin Bieber thing, but I get it. <laughs> okay, okay. You, you, get, you get the mental picture. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, you know, they uh, they told me, you're going to have to leave or you'll be arrested. And I said, well, okay, fine. I'm just letting you know what the law is. And if you touch me, then you accept full commercial liability for the actions that you're about to impose upon me. I couldn't finish saying that. And they said, fuck it, let's leave. So they left. So... The, I went back to the uh, court clerk. Court clerk uh, said that she's going to get her manager. So the manager comes out, said the same thing, you know, exactly the same thing. She pulled Justin Bieber for the third time, and um, so and uh, she said that uh, you know what did the police do? And, uh, and I uh, the police pissed her pants and left. So she said, you know, I just cash the damn thing, just get the hell out of the bank. So we made seventy five bucks off a speeding ticket. That was my first success, uh, success story. <clears throat> So after which is that, an, which is and and I have to say this out loud because I've said it a couple times and it just sounds more fun every time I say it. So getting a speeding ticket, people, it's now a sport, <laughs> and we and we should be looking at it like I mean, obviously you want to be act honorably, but there's some tickets out like I mean that are just ridiculous. So if you get a t- a ticket from now on, treat it like a sport, stand your ground, get your money, walk out, and flip in the bird on the way out. Okay, yeah. I had my say. <laughs> So, yeah, um, so my second time, um, which I still didn't receive a response from my student loan, uh, the second time I ran into the police, the, uh, I, was, uh, I just came back from Nutrition House and I, I picked up some hemp oil, right? I had, to, uh, I, had a, I had a nasty medical condition and I had to get some hemp oil and help relieve it at the time. And uh, so the one of the cops just pulls on by. They're like, I'm on the sidewalk where, you know, people wait for the public transportation. Oh, excuse me. And uh, this cop rolls up like he's balling or some shit. And uh, he tells me, you know, that's against the law, right? To have that uh, medication. And I said, under what law? You know, and, and I was still kind of riding a little bit on the Robin Art boat, you know, explaining what the law is and so on and so forth and et cetera. Right. And uh, he just gets out. He just gets out of his car, and he says, "You want to get paid, boy?" And I said, "Well, you know, you can do that, but there's 25 people watching you, um, watching a police officer incompetent in performing his duties to address some of the questions, and concerns that I have. And since you can't question it, you have lack of jurisdiction. You can't. Uh, you don't have jurisdiction over me. And um, so he just arrested me." <laughs> He just he just threw me in the car and uh, you know he we went under duress. Yeah, obviously under duress. Well, obviously, yeah. So he processed me and all that stuff, and when he tried to get me to sign, I didn't sign anything. So he popped me in the um, in the jail cell, and uh, about two hours after, you hear uh, you hear a 
one of the uh, chief's uh, 